McKiernan, Marlene Bloomberger, Nancy Van Zander, and countless other individuals who helped me plan this and pull off the live streaming into the auditorium that allows hundreds of more family and friends to witness this joyous event. This was their first graduation planning it together, and they did an amazing job. I present to everyone tonight the Bacon Academy Class of 2019. This group of young adults is more socially aware and politically involved than previous generations, very reminiscent of the youth of the late 60s. Once again, we have a class full of graduates who have excelled in sports, at music and arts, at academics, at community service, and at caring for one another. Who you are at this moment will not be who you are in five years, though. You will be older, wiser, more confident. Many of you will be leaving with unprecedented amounts of college credits already under your belts as you head off to college. Others are headed directly into lucrative careers in manufacturing around Connecticut. All of you are leaving with the 10 skills most necessary for life, thanks to your hard work and the support of your teachers, staff here at Bacon Academy, your family, and your friends. I met all of you for the first time four years ago, and we have all grown together. Parents and guardians, I told you that I was going through this experience with you as my own daughter was a freshman at that time. Now she is graduating from high school in a few days and will be heading off to URI. I understand all too personally the avalanche of dizzying emotions you are feeling right now. Your hearts are swelling with pride and reflection at this milestone. You are excited and nervous about the new possibilities for them. That excitement quickly turns to fear when you wonder who will clean their rooms when you're not there to remind them. We want our children to be better than us. And now, we wait to see how the movie plays out. It is a powerless and exhilarating feeling. Good luck to you. I know I will need it. Congratulations to all of you. You are no longer little freshman boobers. You are now grown adults. Take the lessons you have learned and begin your life. You have made me a very proud principal. Thank you. It is my pleasure to now introduce the class of 2019 salutatorium, Amber Deloyer. Hello everyone, how's it going? Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today to celebrate the class of 2019. Thank you to administrators and teachers for giving us this education that was so much more than the common core. Thank you to parents and guardians and friends and family for your unrelenting support. And congratulations to all 185 of my classmates for making it here today. I am truly honored to speak before you. E.M. Doctorow once said that writing is like driving at night through the fog. You can only see as far as your headlights, but you can make it the whole way that way. I think the same is true of life. Most of us know where we're going from here. College, the armed services, directly into the workforce. But many of us don't actually know what we're going to do when we get there. For some of us, it's our choice of major that we're unsure about. Others of us are questioning our career paths, asking what we want to do with our lives, what contribution it is we want to make to the world. For others, we simply have too many interests. But trying to plan our courses that far into the fog is a paralytic rather than an enabler. And it keeps us from living today. Sometimes getting where you need to be is as simple as stopping trying to get there. I'm not saying not to work hard, oh no, <laughs> continue to work hard. We have all labored to be here today. We have made sacrifices 
to mate and place in states, win first at Berkeley, second at NECA, make honors, get into our colleges, on our career paths, and so much more. It hasn't been easy, and this is only the beginning. Remember to keep that passion alive, because we have to, if we are going to wrench our dreams from the world of thoughts into the material. But do not forget to be mindful of the joys of the present, because those joys and these moments and people are what's important. And if we continue to follow them, to live genuinely each day and apply passion where it counts, then one day, we will look up, and we will find that we are exactly where we need to be. Don't worry about building a bridge to success. Think only of the next stone, about joining that club, taking that internship because it seems interesting, about getting up and going to practice early when you don't have to, about taking that class that lights something up in you. And don't fear to fail, to stumble, or to become lost. Because, as Paulo Coelho wrote of in The Alchemist, when you fail while following your personal legend, it is not a failure at all, because you will still feel fulfilled by having lived your life in the most genuine way possible, and be all the better prepared for your future. But, most important to me personally, please continue, please, to be the people that taught me it's okay not to know where you're going, because we're all on this wild, weird road together. And we're all striving each day to build this thing we can be proud of. Looking out at all of you today, I can truly say that we're off to an amazing start. Thank you. Please welcome our 2019 Gilbert Lamb essayist, Madison Park. Hi everybody, this essay is titled Gratitude. Most kids who have lived in six different houses, four different states, and nowhere for longer than five years wouldn't exactly say that they love it. But, for some odd reason, I do. I love the change and the infinite question of what lies ahead. I love being able to go somewhere completely different than the last place and meet completely new people and do completely new things. I love that when someone asks me about an experience, I have a wide bank to choose from. Moving to Colchester has made me extremely aware of just how thankful I should be for this. So many of the people here tonight have been here their entire lives. They're even graduating high school with many of the same faces they went to preschool with. And that's perfectly okay for those people. They know what they like and they know where their home is. But me, I'm thankful for the fact that I am not obligated to say that one specific place is home. I've got quite a few to choose from. It would be the easiest to explain exactly why my family moves around so often if there was a concrete reason, like the military or a job that requires constant travel. But that's not the case. It's a brave thing to pick up and move your family across the country, but I think my parents recognize that they only get one life, and if they're unhappy with something where they are, they can pick up and try again someplace else. And while I may not have always been happy about having to start over so often, now it's something that I cherish and wish to continue throughout my life. I think that spending my childhood moving around has set me apart from the vast majority of people. To most people, being set apart and looked at differently is something they would never in a thousand years want to have. But I think I like it. When you're somebody who doesn't have the same background and the same experiences as those around you, it makes you somebody that those people want to talk to, at least for a little while. When I talk to someone, I want to be able to give them ideas from a perspective that they have never had the opportunity to have. Being somebody different isn't a bad thing or even a scary thing. In fact, I might even say that it's the only thing keeping me sane anymore. There is a universal fascination with being noticed, and although I am not someone that generally seeks the attention of everyone in the room, it's a very easy task to accomplish when you're the kid who walks into an already established English class on a random Tuesday in the middle of the school year. With so much constant change, you meet a lot of very different people, but you also meet a lot of the same type of person. Soon, meeting new people starts to become familiar, and you begin to learn what to expect from certain types of people and what kinds of things you want to look for in the friends you meet. 
There are so many choices, and we get to choose the ones that make our lives better. I'm not only thankful for the ideas that I have gained through all the change, but I am thankful for the very experience. The countless road trips back and forth the entire continental United States, driving through giant redwoods taller and wider than I could ever imagine. Exploring cities ranging from Las Vegas, Nevada to Wichita, Kansas. Having to stop and pee on the side of Route 66 in the middle of the night somewhere in New Mexico. Swimming and enjoying every beach I come across. Getting stuck in the blizzard in the Rocky Mountains for four days and all the other little things along the journey. Everyone has something they take for granted, and this is one of the biggest things for me. It's truly a blessing in disguise. Sure, the goodbyes can be painful, but it's never actually a goodbye. Because with every goodbye comes a new hello, and with every new hello, there's a new story to tell and, and an endless opportunity for something great. I'm now proud to introduce our keynote speakers for the ceremony. At Bacon Academy, it is our tradition to not invite an outside speaker, but to have our beloved teachers as our keynote speakers. Without further ado, here they are. Space of life, remember the most important thing is to just be a good person. Your school's name or work title isn't what matters most. What matters most is how you treat others. Every single person here, every person on earth, has equal human value and deserves respect. Remember that you are no better and no worse than anyone else here. So be kind and loving. Help others whenever you can. Take care of yourself. Stand up and speak out for those who need a voice. Get involved. Be a good person and enjoy the one life that we all get. Love you 2019. It's been a good four years. First off, I don't think I'm qualified to be giving any sort of advice or words of wisdom. I think you have to be a lot older and a lot wiser to do that, but I'm going to give it a shot from one big and happy grad to another. You have so much more to give this world than that cap and that gown. You have so much more to give this world than that IOU one diploma that you're about to walk across the stage and receive. Now it's time to show the world what you're capable of. Now it's time to leave your mark. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Three seconds ago, I had 45 seconds to leave you with some words of wisdom some words of advice to help you navigate through life in the real world. In an attempt to avoid any graduation speech cliches, I will leave you with this. Life is hard, relentless, and in many cases unforgiving. The only one true constant you will have in this life is yourself, and your willingness to adapt in an ever-changing world. The most successful people did not achieve their success through blind luck. Rather, they obtained it from an unrelenting drive to never be complacent the constant grind towards achieving personal excellence. Be willing to be uncomfortable. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. It may get tough, but it is a small price to pay for living a dream. Best wishes and much love. Mal out. Hola, mis amigos. I never imagined that I'd have yet another chance to say something to my seniors. But here I go again. You made it. You've persevered through the years to arrive at this moment. So now you venture forth to discover your destiny and seek your fortunes. Remember that wealth comes in many forms. Friends, family, and knowledge are perhaps the greatest of riches. So choose well. Adios, mis amigos. May we meet again, and always remember the limits of your language are the limits of your world. 
My wish for the class of 2019 is that you will be as lucky as I have been in my career. I have seen high school requirements and student expectations rise year after year. The academic, athletic, and personal accomplishments of your class are without a doubt exceptional. As you move forward, cherish every moment and learn from every experience. Learning is truly lifelong. For you, this is an exciting time. For me, it's bittersweet. I will miss the excitement that comes from working with students that are so full of energy, ability, fresh outlooks, and adventurous goals. Each and every one of you is special. Set your goals high, move forward, and don't stop until you achieve your dream. Remember, giving up on a goal is the only reason you will not achieve it. To the remarkable class of 2019, cheers to a lifetime filled with endless success, health, and happiness. As you travel the highway of life, remember, there will be bumps and wrong turns in the road. It's okay. They're supposed to be there. They're there to help shape you, but not define you. Look forward, only glancing back. That's why the windshield is so much bigger than the rear view mirror. Something I read for inspiration said, living a life avoiding failure does only one thing for you. It never gives you the opportunity to see what you're truly capable of. As you head out into that great big world, failure will be inevitable. That's okay. Use the grit within you and learn from that opportunity. Come out stronger as a result. As cliche as it is, life is about the journey, not the destination. Enjoy your journey. Hi, this is Mr. Pagnosi. As I retire from many momentous years at Bacon Academy, I want to pass on to you graduates the secret of life. Have a plan A, and if that fails, a plan B, and even a plan C. This is one of the ways of success in our ever-changing world you will inherit. It has been an honor to know you as your science teacher, and even if you don't use most of the science that was presented, remember my students what I taught you about life. As Albert Einstein once said, there are two ways to live life. One is though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. He also said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Good luck to all. Some say, oh, Lord, John, thou something. Let me welcome you back to the Academy one last time, if I may, day 720. And take this unique opportunity to thank you for all you have done for the Bacon community and for me. I wish you all long, healthy, satisfying lives, filled with books, birdsong, laughter, and love. Goodbye and good luck. And remember, if you get stuck, whether in writing or in life, just take it bird by bird. In these last few moments of your high school experience, I hope you took a fond look back at your four years at Bacon Academy. You were all freshmen when I started here at Bacon, and now here you are in gowns and tassels. There is so much to be celebrated in your collective achievements, knowing how far you have all come in four years. So as you graduate, be proud, be strong, and remember, you'll always be a Bobcat. Congratulations. And now for a few pieces of unsolicited advice. First, don't give unsolicited advice. Nobody appreciates it. If a street performer makes you stop walking, you owe him or her a buck. It's never too late for an apology, and don't underestimate its power. Under no circumstances should you ask a woman if she is pregnant. And you have no wrong. Forgive yourself for your mistakes. Don't mention sunburns. Believe me, they know. Never dumb yourself down. If you don't understand, ask before it's too late. 
You are what you do, not what you say. No one cares what you could have been. If you can live on the top floor, having neighbors live above you is the absolute worst. <laughs> At some point, it might feel like everyone around you has it all figured out and you're the only one who doesn't. Don't believe that for a second, especially if you're looking at it through the lens of any social media platform. People only post what they want you to see and what makes them look good. Maybe don't be one of those people. Nobody has a life that perfect, and nobody has it all figured out. And lastly, figure out what you love and pursue it. It is what will make you happy. Good luck. Hi. It's Aquaman. I wish you the very best. Now is your time to adopt the responsibilities of adulthood. Shoulder the yoke of work and become productive members of society. The world is in trouble, and you have inherited it all. Some of you have already begun to effect change. Others are still stuck in a haze. Hopefully, you will choose to be a force for good. In the meantime, don't forget, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Seniors, this is the first step of your new adventure. Embrace the path going forward. Do not be afraid to try something new, and do not be afraid of failure. Your success in the future will come from failure and branching out. Take the time to thank those who have helped you and inspired you to become the person who you are today. This journey you're on is not done alone. Going forward, remember that and keep the relationships you have now strong so that they continue to be your rock of support. Good luck on the journey that lies ahead of you. Sincerely, Mr. Lane. As you sit here, ready to start the next chapter in your life, remember these words by Mother Teresa. People are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. But give your best anyway. Congratulations, class of 2019, and a special congratulations to my five from the island. We love you. Class of 2019, this is Mr. Norman. Be proud of your accomplishments. No matter if you sprinted to the finish line or you had to be dragged, kicking or screaming, you still made it here today. Find your bliss. Find what makes you happy and pursue it with all of your heart. Your personal legend, your path is out there waiting to be discovered. Remember that you are the only one who can decide what's right for you. Take care. Keep in touch. Norman. The class of 2019 would like to express our gratitude to everyone that made it tonight possible. Mrs. Bloomberger, Ms. McKiernan, Ms. Van Zander, and all the administrators for their work in coordinating this actual event, as well as parents, guardians, family members, friends, and teachers that offer us a variety of support over the last four years. We would like to especially thank our class advisors, Ms. Keogreen, and Mrs. St. George for their continued support over the last four years. 
Under your guidance, we are privileged enough to have wonderful proms, a great class trip, class apparel, and so many other logistics taken care of. We cannot express our gratitude for everything you have done to make our high school experience so memorable. Please come receive a token of our appreciation. The class of 2019 would like to extend Bacon Academy the gift of a new water bottle refill station to be located in the cafeteria. This will allow students to sanitarily access water during lunch, as well as to refill their water bottles, eliminating single-use water bottle waste. The class of 2019 would also like to acknowledge some special guests. The members of the Bacon Academy class of 1969 who are in attendance today, thank you for joining us on this special occasion. And of course, congratulations to our wonderful staff members who will be retiring this year. Walter Solinsky, Martin Pagnozzi, Ann Copeland, Kathy Maher, Kathleen Price, Julie Purcell, our school nurse, Jean Sonny, and our school resource officer, first class, Robert Zichetti. Please you please come to see this small time in our future. You can each come receive a small token of our appreciation. Of course, we can't forget our beloved Miss Mary. Wait for it. They understood how their lives had meaning. 
They each understood their purpose, which consequently gave them a reason for living. The moral of the story was that if you have a sense of meaning in your life, you can survive practically anything. Right now, we're all at this huge, pivotal moment in our lives where we basically have to decide how we want the rest of our lives to go. I'm 17, and I still struggle with deciding whether I want pancakes or waffle for breakfast. How am I supposed to decide what I want to be doing 20 years from now? There's so many different pathways of life to choose from. It can get extremely overwhelming. My advice to you is simply this. Try to find something in life that gives you purpose. Something that gives you a reason for living. And it doesn't have to be your profession. I'm not trying to sit here and preach, follow your dreams, you can be whatever you set out to be. Because honestly, that's not always the case. At a solid 5'3", I'm probably not going to be a professional basketball player. <laughs> but seriously, the thing that gives you meaning can be literally anything. For Mr. Cage, or should I say Aquaman, his purpose in life is to fish. For Mr. Williams, it's clearly birds. <laughs> For Ethan Moores and Anna Pakulka, it's to ski. For Andrew Janis, it's to run. For Gabby Snow, it's to dance. And for Chris Matthew, it's definitely by Supreme. <laughs> for the rest of us, including myself, we may not have a single clue as to what our purpose is. But honestly, that's what makes this time in our lives so precious. Right now is our time to explore. For the majority of us that are going to college, you are about to have access to an infinite amount of opportunities. So take them. I cannot stress this enough. Take advantage of every single opportunity you are afforded. Take that class on astrology, join the ultimate frisbee team, volunteer, work in internships, study abroad. The more things you expose yourself to, the more chances you have at finding something that gives you meaning. Something that makes you understand why you were put on this earth. Just think about that for a second. Do you understand how incredible it is that each one of us is alive right now? The fact that our parents somehow came to meet each other, then hit it off, hit it off enough to procreate, <laughs> then out of the trillions of possible genetic combinations, the combination specific to each and every one of us was randomly generated. Like, what are the odds? Oh yeah, it's one in 400 trillion. We were all put here for a reason. Every single one of us has a purpose. Maybe Olivia Guinness will solve the cure for cancer. Maybe Michael Islam will become our future president. Maybe Mary Pugno will teach other farmers how to maintain a farm sustainably. Maybe Ryan Conant will invent something that reverses global warming. Whatever our purpose is, big or small, it's out there. We just simply need to find it. The third time to charm, so I'll say it one more time. The meaning of life is to find your life's meaning. So go out there, try some new things, step out of your comfort zone, just live a little. And while you're on this crazy, wild, spontaneous journey that we call life, I hope each and every one of you eventually finds your purpose. Thank you for being the greatest class of students Bacon Academy has ever had, and I wish you all the luck in the world with wherever you go in life. Thank you. Please stand and join us in singing our own motto, Big Hogan, led by the Big Hogan.
I would now like to introduce Mr. Bradley J. Vernier, Chairman of the Board of Education. Join me in welcoming Mr. Jeffrey E. Burns, our Superintendent of Schools.
Thank you and good evening. So I really want to thank Jessica uh, for pointing out that it's really nerve-wracking writing speeches, so thank you for doing that. Uh, I get the honor of going after Mr. Peel, my boss, and three of our incredible students. Plus, I'm like the speaker at a workshop, you know, just before they serve dinner, but everyone can smell dinner. So, you know, you see all these diplomas right here, and now I'm going to talk for a while at you. So, yeah, thank you, Jessica. Um, I only cried five times when I wrote this. So, so good afternoon. Welcome, board members, colleagues, distinguished guests, family, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2019. My name is Jeffrey Burt, and I have the honor and privilege of being the superintendent of Colchester Public Schools. And indeed, it has been an honor to get to know the district, the staff, the students, and the community over the past year, as it's been an incredible experience, and one where I know the community has been so, so welcoming. So thank you for that time. What you may not know about me is that I also have the great honor and privilege of being the father of four beautiful daughters, the oldest of which is graduating high school tomorrow night, and that had no influence on calling snow days, just so you know. And what makes this class of 19 so special to me personally. So because I get to give a speech here, and since I don't think my daughter actually listens to me, and since you are a captive audience, what I'd like to do tonight is to speak to you, the class of 2019, on behalf of family and friends, as I would to my own daughter, Harriet. I'll be speaking more as a father than an educator tonight, but everyone in this room knows that the line between those two is blurred. I also let you ignore my advice, as my own children tend to do, even though I do think some of it does sink in over the past 18 years. So here's my speech to you and to my daughter. Dear class of 2019 and Harriet, for you this evening is about closing out one chapter of life and opening another one. You may know what you're doing next year, or you may not have a clue. And guess what? Either of this piece is actually what it should be. For us, your family, your friends, this is a much different experience. We remember you coming home from the hospital. Remember your first steps, your first word, your first day at kindergarten, and many other firsts. We remember, perhaps less fondly, when you got your driver's license and drove out of the driveway for the first time. And maybe your first date, which still gives me heartache to this day. <laughs> then suddenly we blinked and now here you are, graduating from high school. And this, at least from my experience, is a bittersweet moment. Tonight it's important to tell you that we are so proud of you in so many ways. And although we may not always show it or say it as much as we should, we're excited for the possibilities ahead of you because we know you're ready to make your own way. But we're also nervous because we also know many of the challenges you face. In any adventure before you, always remember that we are here to help you if you need it. Beyond helping you, we also have many hopes and dreams for your future. For example, I hope you don't make any mistakes, that you don't have any heartbreaks or financial trouble or difficulty with your own children one day. All that is the hope of a father, it is a mistake. It would be a mistake because the experiences like these that will help you become who you will be in the future. What I do hope for you is that you will be brave and face your fears, that you learn from your mistakes and your heartaches, you try new things and adventures and continue to learn just as if you continue to learn over the past years here in Colchester. I could also hope for you to be happy for the rest of your life, but what I really want for you is contentment. Being happy is wonderful, but it's a state of being that just can't exist all the time. Unfortunately, we live in a world what business guru Seth Godin calls inadequacy on parade. We are constantly bombarded by examples of people we should try to be or things we should try to have. Setting an unrealistic version of what life should be or have an ideal as soon as you pick up your, your phone. In fact, I see my own daughters obsessed over Instagram, influencers, the perfect outfit, the perfect prom proposal, and even the perfect cupcake. But over time, the grinding inadequacy, inadequacy of these unrealistic images wears us down, makes us doubt ourselves, and causes pain. It gets better. So my hope for you is not perfection or constant happiness, but contentment. And I ask that you find these things and give you everyday peace of mind and the small joys in life. In Japan, and in particular in the island of Okinawa, 
which is known for the longest life expectancy in the world. This is known as Ikegai. Among other things, Ikegai means instead of seeking to have many things, seek meaning in everyday things. For me, this includes seeing the success of students and staff of Colchester, but also talking with friends, walking my dog, listening to good music when I cook. Only you can know what it means for you, and I hope you can find contentment. So, some final bits of advice. I wouldn't be a dad if I didn't make them. Make your own meaning, define your own awesome. Don't let others define what success looks like for you. Avoid those people that make you feel small and those that detract from your self-worth. You have the world in front of you, and so find others like you that will make your life better. Go out and find experiences that give you joy, both large and small. And don't post those experiences on social media. <laughs> Just enjoy them for their own sake, especially time with friends and family. Finally, to the class of 2019, and Harriet, we love you, and we know that you will make us proud. Congratulations to the class of 2019. So at this point, we are certifying the class of 2019. Mr. Bernier, I certify that these members of the class of 2019 have met the graduation requirements as approved by the Colchester Board of Education for a Bacon Academy diploma. Mr. Bernier, on behalf of the Colchester Board of Education, I accept these seniors who are being certified to have met the requirements for graduation. Catherine Victoria Aldridge. Sarah Elizabeth Aldridge. Leonardo Amaro Jr. Anthony Albert Ambrosia. Bridget Cameron Anderson. David Ashley. Caleb Baldock. Lily Baldinger. Samantha Barter. Mike Bear. Jacob Belge. Zachary Daniel Below. Miley Sabrina Bloomberger. Evan Bordeaux. Nicholas Paul Bouchon. Evan Bradstreet. Shay Lily Catherine Resnick. <laughs> Kyle Berzinki. <laughs> Brittany Byington. 
Corbin Capone. Mercedes Grace Cannon. Caitlin Chassie. Christopher Lee CRC. Matthew Clark. Shannon Page Clark. Caitlin Cole. Sarah Noel Chuma. Mary Cunio. Cameron Curtis. Abigail Delia. Michaela Dahlin Bukvist. J.D. Denke. Stephanie Lynn Davis. Brian Deck II. Ariana Deschamps. Spencer Shane Dinsmore. Will Thomas Dow. Ethan Robert Dubio. Noah Elliott. <laughs> Carrie Epstein. <laughs> Sarah Islami. <laughs> Jared Evans.
Joshua Pan.
Jessica Savage. 